In this video, we'll explore the compositing panel, which lets us apply filters and effects to images. We can just drag and drop an image from our computer into Boxy SVG, or there's a built-in library that has pictures imported from Pixabay. It also has vector graphics from Pixabay, as well as fonts and color palettes. But we'll go to pictures here, and we can just left-click and hold and drag this image over. And we can get a couple different images. And then with this image selected, we can just go back into the compositing and apply some filters. So we click this drop down and we can choose a drop shadow, which will add a darker drop shadow to this image. Um, we can change through lots of different ones of these and see what they look like. This spotlight puts a spotlight here and we can adjust how much ambient light there is behind or the cone angle. We can even change the color of the spotlight if we want it to look a little bit different. So there's all kinds of settings, and the settings are going to be different depending on what filter you're using. And there's all kinds of different ones. Go ahead and scroll down and play with some of these and just get used to what different filters there are available. And then to, if we want to do something different, we just go to our transform tool, select a different image, and we can apply filters to that. If we go back to the spotlight, and we could change this around a little bit, if we do change it and we want it to look a specific look that we want to repeat several times again, we can just convert this to a custom filter. We click convert to custom filter and now we have this down below under custom filters spotlight a second time with our custom settings. We can then go and select a different image and we could apply those settings directly to that image as well if we wanted to have uh, multiple images with the same custom settings. The blend mode determines how the selected image will be blended with the background. So right now we have a white background, so there's not going to be much difference here. But if you're familiar with blend modes, there's different ways that it will appear, and there's different ways that it can be applied to this background. And so play with some of these different blend modes, and like I said, it'll depend on what's behind the image as well. So if we change the blend mode on this one here, it'll look different. Uh, it'll have some transparency looking through to the images behind it. It's a good idea to keep this on normal if you're not familiar with it, and it's more of an advanced feature. The opacity determines how transparent the image is, uh, and it's the entire composition. So it's not just the colors like we saw in the stroke and the fill. It's not just the opacity of the element. It's actually the opacity of the entire um, composite image. And this is nice because no matter what filters or effects to it or masks, uh, we can ap apply an opacity to the entire composition. Uh, speaking of masks, we can do a, a mask. I'll delete this here. If we wanted to mask out a certain part of this image, we could draw, for example, a, an ellipse. And we can draw an ellipse over here and just mask out that part. So we size this to be exactly how we want. And then selecting both the object that we've drawn and the image, we can click this clip on cover. And it will clip to just that part of the image. If we ever want to get it back, we can click clip again, and it'll separate those out. But that clip is a good way that we can clip. Oh, they both have to be selected, and we can clip in. And we can create our own custom thing as well. So if we wanted to, instead of this circle, we could create a very custom path. We can grab something like this, and we can create a uh, any kind of a custom shape that we want to, and we could clip that to the image as well. I can undo these changes by hitting Control Z, and we can also apply a mask. I'm going to grab a new image here. We'll choose a darker image to demonstrate masking. We can create any custom mask we want. So we could do an ellipse. We could create, uh, let's, let's do something custom like maybe a star. So we draw a star over this. And then instead of just clipping to that, we could create a mask. And so the mask is going to be useful if we have a gradient in here. And so we can click on the fill. And we can go to either a, a radial or linear gradient. And we can adjust this from a black to a white. So white is going to be the part that it sees uh, that is the most transparent seeing through to the image. And then black is going to be our fade. So we can fade like this. And then we'll just select the image. We go into compositing. We select first our image. And then we hold down the shift key and select our star second. Did that get selected? And then we can hit the mask. And what that's going to do is mask it out, but also apply that gradient in there. So if we wanted to apply a gradient to the whole thing, we could do control Z. And we could just change this mask. Uh, well, what we could do, we can go into our deaths and we can uh, just quickly add this as a custom gradient. So we'll go add gradient and then we can uh, delete this and we'll draw just a nice rectangle over top of the entire image and add this gradient in there. 
And now when we select these, we can go back into compositing and go mask. And we've created sort of a fade mask, fading from white here and then fading into the darker part of the image. So that's one way that you can use masking. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best demonstration, but it is a very useful feature and clipping is especially useful. I also forgot to mention that we can add these custom filters to our depths panel. So if we want to create a, a specific filter, we want to do brightness maybe, and then adjust the brightness of this to be much brighter. Well, we can add this into our custom filters by just clicking convert to custom filter. And now when we go into our depths panel, we'll see this brightness under this, there's a section for filters. So just like we have had our gradients and our colors, we can add in uh, this brightness. And then any images that we bring in, we can bring in a few more images and then very quickly go into that depths panel under the filters and drag this brightness filter on top of those to adjust them. I hope this video has helped you to become a little more comfortable with the compositing panel and I hope this helped you to see different ways that you can apply these filters and create your own custom filters in Boxy SVG.